Disney's Carousel of Progress. Uh, you're in for a real treat. The Carousel of Progress was Walt's own idea from beginning to end. He loved it. He introduced the show at the World's Fair in New York City in 1964, and it was an immediate smash hit. Millions of people came to see it. And since then, the Carousel of Progress has had more performances than any other stage show in the history of American theater. You know, Walt loved the idea of progress, and he loved the American family. And he himself was probably as American as anyone could possibly be. He thought it would be fun to watch the American family go through the 20th century, experiencing all the new wonders as they came. And he put them together in a show called Carousel of Progress, which we are now about to see. Although our Carousel family has experienced a few changes over the years, our show still revolves around the same theme, and that's progress. May the century begin. There's a great big beautiful tomorrow, and tomorrow is just a dream away. And that's great, and that's so short. There's a great big beautiful tomorrow, just a dream away. Looks like the Robins are getting ready to celebrate Valentine's Day today. <laughs> what year is it? Oh, right around the turn of the century. And believe me, things couldn't be any better than they are today. Yes, sir, buildings are towering now as high as 20 stories. And moving pictures flicker up on a big screen. We have almost 8,000 automobiles in this country, and we can travel by train from New York to California in less than seven days. And I even hear tell about two brothers from North Carolina who are working on some kind of flying contraption. <laughs> It'll never work. Closer to home, we've now got gas lamps, a telephone, and the latest design in cast iron stoves. And that reservoir keeps five gallons of water hot and just three buckets of coal. Oh, boy, it sure beats chopping wood. And isn't our new ice box a beauty? Look at that. Holds 50 pounds of ice. Milk doesn't sour as quick as it used to. And our dog Rover here keeps the water in the drip pan from overflowing. It wasn't too long ago we had to carry water from a well. And thanks to progress, we've got a pump right here in the kitchen. Of course, we keep a bucket of water handy to prime it with. Yes, sir, we've got everything we need to make life easier. Say, Mother, I was reading about a fellow named Tom Edison who's working on an idea for snap-on electric lights. Electric lights? No more kerosene, no more gas. <laughs> Sarah sure gets to the core of the apple. But we do have this new wash day marvel. Now it takes me only five hours to do the wash. Imagine, it used to take two days. Well, that's right, folks. Now Sarah has time for other things like... Like canning uh, and cleaning the oven. Yes, dear. Well, ovens don't just clean themselves, you know. I know, dear. <laughs> and they probably never will. Now, if you'll excuse me, before it starts raining cats and dogs. Oh, uh, don't worry, Rover. She didn't mean real dogs. Besides, it's not going to rain today. My lumbago isn't acting up. I remember. Say, I told you so. Boy, look at it come down. All you have to do is put your wash on the line, right? Oh, well, the cistern was low anyway. Wow, we look at that. Now, James, I thought I told you to ask my permission before using my new stereoscope. It's not a toy, you know. Ooh, la, la. So that's little Egypt doing the hoochie-coochie, eh, Dad? Isn't she a knockout? She's the star of the new World's Fair in St. Louis, and... <clears throat> now, you put that away before your mother finds it. Aw, oh, Dad. You heard me. Well, we have one of those new talking machines. Now, that is something. It plays music right here in our home. Yes, Patricia? Papa, all these people. I'm, I'm indecent. <laughs> Don't worry, Patricia. They're friends. That's our teenage daughter. She's getting ready to go to a Valentine's dance across town on one of those new horseless trolleys. I think it's very romantic you're taking Mother out for Valentine's dinner this evening. Well, you know what kind of sport I am. I only hope I have an evening as romantic as yours and mine. Now, you be home by 9 o'clock, daughter. You hear me? 
Oh, well, with all this talking, I've worked up quite a thirst. <laughs> I think I'll take one of those newfangled trolleys down to the drugstore soda fountain and meet the boys for cold sarsaparilla. Oh, uh, <laughs> I'm sorry, I forgot. We're drinking root beer now. Same kind of thing, different name. Well, that's progress for you. And uh, speaking of progress, there's a great, big, beautiful tomorrow. It's just a thing away. Hottest 4th of July we've had in years. We've come a long way, though, since the turn of the century, over 20-some-odd years ago. You know that pilot fella, Charles Lindbergh? He's about to fly a single-wing airplane all the way across the Atlantic. <laughs> He's never going to make it. And sports stadiums are springing up all over. And boy, nobody hits that old horse hide like that new fella, Babe Ruth. Jazz music is the cat's meow. And there's been ads in the paper for months for a movie starring Al Jolson. And he's going to talk and sing. Oh, boy, I've got to see that. <laughs> there goes Schwartz in his Huffmobile. He sure loves that horn. You know, in my new Essex, I've got an electric starter. Now I don't have to crank. We can travel from New York to Los Angeles by train in only three days. And we've got a house full of new electrical servants. Mr. Edison sure added life to our home. Whoa there, you blow a fuse. Crap, that's the third one this week. I buy fuses by the case. Uh-oh, and I've blown the whole neighborhood again. Easy, Rover. Jimmy, hurry up with that fuse. Shucks. Every time he has company, he blows a fuse. And guess who always has to change it? I heard that, young man. I heard that. Oh, well, that's more like it. John, yours is the last costume I've got to finish before the parade starts. Sarah's Ladies Club is responsible for our town's 4th of July celebration tonight. She's got us all roped into performing in their program, and right? I've decided we're going as George and Martha Washington, dear. Oh, the father of our country. <laughs> That's a role that really fits me. You know, I'm I... so glad we installed an electric light fixture here on the porch because it's just too darn hot to be sewing inside. Yes, Sarah. You know, next year I'd like to go as Benedict Arnold. And Wait I'm... until you see what I've got planned for the fireworks show tonight. <laughs> Rover, don't interrupt while Sarah's interrupting. And guess who volunteered to choose the music for the program? I did, Pop. Listen to this. Oh, that's a nice tune, Jimmy. You know, with our new Crosley radio set, we can get news and big-time entertainment from all over the country, even Pittsburgh. Well, we're starting to arrive downtown for a spectacular Oh, Patricia. Yes, Father. Better get a move on. The radio says folks are arriving downtown. Do I really have to go? If my new boyfriend, Theodore, sees me in this, it'll scare him away. Oh, well, dear. If that happens, you'll always have that torch you can carry for him. <laughs> oh, Father. Calm down, Rover. I was only kidding. By the way, we have indoor plumbing now. Oh, boy, that's really great on cold nights, especially for our perennial house guest, old Uncle Orville. <laughs> Uncle Orville's taken over the coolest spot in the house, of course, and he's rigged up a real clever contraption. He calls it air cooling. <laughs> Too bad he's not reading the help wanted ads. No privacy at all around this place. Sorry, Orville. You know, considering all the... Oh, coming, Martha, as I was saying. Considering all the conveniences we now have, I'll say that we're really on easy street these days. It just can't get any better. Just goes to show that there's a great, big, beautiful tomorrow Shining at the end of every day There's a great dream with my heart And when it becomes a reality It's a dream come true for you and me tomorrow Oh,
must not dream away. Well, it's another Halloween here in the fabulous 40s. Everything is better than ever now, and we've got some amazing new wonders around the house to prove it. For instance, our refrigerator holds more food and ice cubes. And thanks to our automatic dishwasher, oh, I don't have to dry the dishes anymore after supper. Gives Rover and me more time to enjoy our evening stroll together. <laughs> Later, boy. Oh, and here's something else that's new. I just heard a new term today on the radio. Fella says, we've got something now called the rat race. Did you ever hear that one? It sure describes my life. I'm involved in something now called commuting. I drive into the city for work all day and then turn right around and drive all the way back. And the highway is crowded with fellow rats doing the same thing. That's what they call progress, dear. <laughs> yeah, I guess she's right. But we do have television <laughs> when it works. Gives you something to do after you come home. I kind of like it, you know? Guy named John Cameron Swayze gives us all the news. And then they have all this singing and dancing. A lot of fluff, but it's fun. You know, I predict the day when millions of people will learn Latin and Greek sitting in front of their TV sets. Are you awake, dear? <laughs> Give him a left, you big lug. Ah, yes, a new age of electronic civilization is upon us. Hey, Dad, what do you think of my jack o lantern Oh, oh, boy, that's scary. That's because I'm using my beautiful sister Patty's picture for a model. <laughs> Down, Rover. Jim, Rover appreciates your joke. Now, you're always kidding poor Patty. She's certainly prettier than either of you. Oh. You hear that? My daughter Patty is using that old exercise machine she rescued from the attic. It was all the rage in the 20s. Grandma, of course, had to have one. Didn't work then, doesn't work now. <laughs> Consistent, at least. Makes a lot of noise and blows fuses. As I was saying, Dad, I think college is really swell. You should give it a try. Oh, Patty, are you going to the Halloween party tonight? Oh, yes. they said about me when I was dating Sarah. <laughs> You're lucky, Rover. You don't have to date. Well, we're caught up in the do-it-yourself craze these days. We're remodeling our basement of something called a, a rumpus room, and we're looking forward to a few rumpuses, I'll tell you, as long as they don't get out of hand. John, this papering is getting out of hand. I could use a little now, Sarah, didn't I set up that clever automatic paint stirring machine for you? Yes, John, you're a genius. Of course, this will ruin my food mixer. Not that you'd care. Oh, good old Sarah. Always the last laugh. <laughs> what happened, Sarah? Oh, you and your progress. That paint mixer of yours just sloshed paint across my rump. I have a rumpus the room. <laughs> Now, how do you like that? I always say if you're going to be married, marry a girl with a sense of humor. Well, it's time to move on. Let's cheer up Sarah by singing our song. Come on, everybody. There's a great big beautiful tomorrow. And tomorrow's just a dream. It's a dream come true for you and me, so there's a great big beautiful tomorrow, shining at the end of every day. There's a great big beautiful tomorrow, just a dream away. Isn't it a pleasant holiday? Oh, turkey's in the oven, it's peaceful and quiet. Yes, 300 points, my best score yet. Well, it was peaceful until Santa brought that new virtual reality space pilot game. Your turn, Grandma. Let's switch the image over to the TV so the resident flying ace can show you how it works. Now, it's a little tricky, 
Just use your game glove to fly behind the other guy and blast him with your laser blaster. Laser blaster? Well, I'll give it a try. Take a look around, Grandma. You're in the ship. Feels like I'm really there. Okay, get ready. You're about to blast off. Here goes nothing. Whoa. All right, here it comes. Oh, you missed him. Hey, everybody. I'm done programming our new voice activation system. Now all our household items will do anything we tell them to do. Right. Hell, a refrigerator drank me to roof beer. Well, it can't quite do that. But I'll show you something it can do. Tree lights 30% brighter. Oh, that's no good deal. Anybody can do that voice activation. Watch it. Roller! Speak! John, the oven should respond to voice commands now. Give it a try. Okay. Here goes. Temperature to 375. Temperature increase to 375. Look at that. It even talks back. It reminds me of certain people I know. Yeah, right, Dad. You gotta lose him, Grandma. Bang to the right. Remember Dad's turkey last year? <laughs> yeah, that thing really smoked up the place when it burned, didn't it? We ended up microwaving frozen pizzas. Well, no need to worry about the turkey this year. Not that an oven that will do anything your father tells it to do. Ooh, good shot. Did you see that? Dad, Grandma's up to 550 points. Did you say 550? Hey, she's getting the hang of that thing. I can't believe all the new gadgets they've got now. You know in my day. Oh, no. You're not going to tell us about the old days when you didn't even have a car phone. Hey, Trish, for a while we didn't even have a house phone. Not to mention laser discs, high-def TV. Everything's automated today. Including. Well, including that. No prior teams all around this place. Sorry, Orbit. Anyway, you guys don't know how good you got it now, do you? You know, my grandpa told me the very same thing when I was a kid. Take that, you nincompoop! Hey, check it out, Dad. Grandma's up to 975 points. Wow, 975? <laughs> Best two out of three, Grandma. Later, kid. Boy, that was fun. What will they think of next? Who knows? We've got a whole new century waiting for us out there. Yeah, and maybe sometime in the new century, your father will learn how to talk to our oven. Well, maybe by then, ovens will read our minds. But hey, as long as we're all here and happy and together for the holidays, who cares if I burned our Christmas turkey? I do. I'm <laughs> Don't worry, Dad. Someday, everything's going to be so automated, you won't ever have to cook another Christmas turkey again. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for joining us on Walt Disney's Carousel of Progress. We hope you've enjoyed this tribute to the 1964 Carousel of Progress from the New York World's Fair. Please gather all of your personal belongings and exit through the doors located at the back of the theater. Have a great big beautiful day. And remember, tomorrow is just a dream away. First up, Progress City. Walt Disney's amazing dream for a community of tomorrow. Did you know Progress City inspired Epcot? And a lot of the visionary ideas throughout Walt Disney World. Look, there's even a tiny people mover.
Welcome to It's a Small World. For your safety, please remain seated throughout your voyage, keeping your hands, arms, feet, and legs inside the boat. And please watch your children. Thank you. Bienvenidos. Para su seguridad, permanezca sentado y mantenga las manos, brazos, pies y piernas dentro del barco.
corazón. Merci. Yes. Por favor, permanezca sentado hasta que el bote se detenga en el muelle y se le pida que desembarque. Gracias. Please remain seated until your boat comes to a complete stop at the dock and you are asked to disembark. Thank you. Boat が完全に止まり、下船していただく指示が出されるまでは席を立たないでください。ご協力ありがとうございます。Por favor, permanezca sentado hasta que el bote se detenga en el muelle y se retire de los embarques. Gracias. Bitte bleiben Sie im Boot sitzen, bis es zu einem vollständigen Halt kommt und Sie gebeten werden aufzustehen. Danke. Please remain and you are asked to disembark. Thank you. Veuillez rester assis jusqu'à l'arrêt complet du bateau. Et attendez jusqu'à ce que l'autre ou l'hôtesse vous demande de descendre. Merci. Por favor, permanezca sentado hasta que el bote se detenga en el muelle y se le pida que nos embarque. Gracias. Please remain seated until your boat comes to a complete stop at the dock and you are asked to disembark. <coughs> ¿Cuánto tiempo de esos fallos se brindan?
to talk a little more about the nation's 16th president, Abraham Lincoln. Ever since I was a youngster, I've had a great personal admiration for Abraham Lincoln. So when we decided to bring to Disneyland's visitors some great moments in Mr. Lincoln's life, we began an exhaustive research. We wanted to bring to the people of today the inspiring words of the man who held this nation together during its moment of greatest crisis, the Civil War. To start with, we were fortunate in being able to secure this life mask of the 16th president. How do we get this blame? This is actually a copy of an original life mask by the sculptor Leonard Volk. Before Lincoln was president. Before Lincoln was president. Before he had a beard. That's right. During our exhaustive research into Lincoln's life, we studied his mannerisms, his gestures, and even his voice characteristics to create a faithful likeness of this honored man. The final resolve is so lifelike that you might find it hard to believe. Now let's go into the opera house and listen carefully to the words of Mr. Lincoln, spoken by him a century ago, but which still apply today to free men everywhere. If you would now please pass through the doors leading to our theater, we welcome you to great moments with Mr. Lincoln. For your safety, please stay behind that red line on the carpet as the automatic doors will be opening up towards you. Please finish, throw away, or put away any open food or drinks, such as coffee or soda cups, popcorn, churros, pretzels, or ice cream. And if you have a stroller with you, please park on the outside of our building near our main entrance doors as they are not permitted to enter the theater. Please watch your step in entering the theater and move forward to that row directly in front of you. Our middle row underneath the brass eagle, which is our widest and flattest style all the way through, is reserved for any guests using wheelchairs, electric scooters, canes or crutches, and also for their parties. Thank you, and please do not cross over that red line until all of the doors are fully open. and gentlemen, we welcome you to Great Moments with Mr. Lincoln. Illinois 
knew very much about this man from the prairie. I was born February 12th, 1809, in Hardin County, Kentucky. My father removed from Kentucky to what is now Spencer County, Indiana, in my eighth year. It was a wild region, with many bears and other wild animals still in the woods. There I grew up. I was large for my age, and had an axe put into my hands at once. And from that to my 23rd year, was almost constantly handling that most useful instrument. I think that the aggregate of all my schooling did not amount to one year. At 21, I came to Illinois. I thought of trying to study law. I rather thought I could not succeed at that without better education. I borrowed some law books, took them home, and went at it in good earnest. In 1854, the law profession had almost superseded the thought of politics in my mind. When the repeal of the Missouri Compromise aroused me as I had never been before. What I have done since then is pretty well known. If any personal description of me is thought desirable, it may be said that I am in height, six feet, four inches, nearly, lean in flesh, weighing on an average of 180 pounds, dark complexion, with coarse black hair and gray eyes, and no other marks or brands recollected. Yours very truly, A. Lincoln. Abraham Lincoln became president faced with the terrible threat of civil war, a thing he dreaded, yet a calamity he was prepared to meet if he must. Without union, the Constitution is only a piece of paper. I know there is a God, and that he hates injustice and slavery. I see the storm coming. I know his hand is in it. If he has a place, work for me. And I think he has. I believe I'm ready. And with God's help, I shall not fail. April 12, 1861, Fort Sumter, the cannon spoke for war. Civil war, violent, devastating. Now had come the reckoning, the supreme test that would decide whether a republic founded on liberty could survive the terrible strife of men's passions.
score and seven years ago, our fathers brought forth on this continent a new nation, conceived in liberty and dedicated to the proposition that all men are created equal. Now we are engaged in a great civil war, testing whether that nation or any nation so conceived and so dedicated can long endure. Ten brief sentences, so simple, so direct. Abraham Lincoln had not expected his words to live beyond their temporary moment. But time and history would dictate otherwise. And so today, his Gettysburg Address is immortal, a rich and treasured part of our country's heritage. We pay tribute here, not to a man who lived a century ago, but to an individual who lives today in the hearts of all freedom-loving people. His prophetic words are as valid for our time as they were for his. And now, the skills of the sculptor and the talents of the artist will let us relive great moments with Mr. Lincoln. of the word liberty. And the American people just now are much in want of one. We all declare for liberty. But in using the same word, we do not all mean the same thing. What constitutes the bulwark of our liberty and independence. It is not our frowning battlements, our bristling sea coasts. These are not our reliance against tyranny. Our reliance is in the love of liberty, which God has planted in our bosoms. Our defense is in the preservation of the spirit which prizes liberty as the heritage of all men, in all lands, everywhere. Destroy this spirit, and you have planted the seeds of despotism around your own doors. At what point Shall we expect the approach of danger? By what means shall we fortify against it? Shall we expect some transatlantic military giant to step the ocean and crush us with a blow? Never. All the armies of Europe, Asia, and Africa combined could not by force take a drink from the Ohio or make a track on the Blue Ridge in a trial of a thousand years. At what point then is the approach of danger to be expected? I answer, if it ever reaches, it must spring from amongst us. It cannot come from abroad. If destruction be our lot, we ourselves must be its author and finisher. As a nation of free men, we must live through all times or die by suicide. Neither let us be slandered from our duty by false accusations against us nor frightened from it by the menaces of destruction to the government 
not of dungeons to ourselves. Let us have faith that right makes might. And in that faith, let us to the end dare to do our duty as we understand it.
Canyon as we know it today. 